All right, what's up guys? My name is Jacques GQ, and today I'm gonna to showing you guys how to like Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Valkyrie, Valkyrie. Quick disclaimer though, I cannot cover every single effect she does in every single one of her videos because if I did, we'd be here for quite some time. But I will be covering the ones that I feel like she uses pretty often. So if you find any of these effects helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Now the effects we're going to be covering for this video are this like dramatic effect. We're also going to be covering a Bezier zoom. We're going to be covering the zoom with like a flash effect. Next is going to be when she has graphics coming on the screen, kind of shaking a little bit and when they come off the screen too. And then lastly, we're going to be covering this like swipe transition with a slight shake going on. Now our first effect is going to be that dramatic effect. So we're going to hop into Premiere and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. Now I've got some CSGO footage here on the timeline so we can have something to look at while we're editing. But to begin, you're gonna to go to the project files in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, right click, go to new item and add in an adjustment layer. Go ahead and make that 60 frames per second while we're at it too. And then go ahead and take that adjustment layer and drag it onto your timeline. Also make sure to go ahead and cut it down because we're not gonna really need all of this. Next, you're gonna to go to the effects in the top right and you're gonna look for an effect called crop. You're going to drag and drop that onto that adjustment layer and then you're going to look for an effect called brightness and contrast and you're going to drag that onto that adjustment layer too next go ahead and select that adjustment layer and then go to the effects controls in the top left and then scroll down a bit then you're going to change your top and bottom percentages to 10. what that'll do is give us that black bar for that like dramatic effect next you can go ahead and close crop because we're not going to be messing with it anymore and then you're going to want to move your play to the very beginning of this adjustment layer and then you're going to hit the stopwatch next to brightness and then go ahead and change this initial value to let's say five then move your play head forward a little bit more and then change that to two move your playhead forward again and then change the value to four and then lastly move it ahead one more time and change this value back to zero and then go ahead and make these keyframes where they're pretty bunched up together then you're going to select all of them hold your alt key left click and then drag it over to duplicate them and then basically you're just going to do this for as long as you want this effect to be going on and then here you go here's that dramatic effect we did this next effect we're going to be covering is this bezier zoom so we're going to hop in the mirror and i'll show you guys how we're going to do it now you're going to want to go ahead and go to your project files in the bottom left again and grab another adjustment layer. Go ahead and trim it down a bit and then go to the effects in the top right and look for an effect called transform. You'll find it under distort and then drag that on top of that adjustment layer. Then go to the effects controls in the top left, scroll down a bit. Then you're going to move your play to the very beginning and you're going to set a, then you're going to say this, the, then you're going to set the, blah, blah, blah. and then you're going to click the stopwatch next to position and scale. Then you're going to move your playhead forward a bit. Roughly around here, there's not like an exact number you need to be doing, but just roughly around this area. And then let's say in our circumstance, we want to be zooming in on the knife at the bottom part of our screen here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and change the scale value to 250. And then I'm going to go up to my position value. And really all I'm going to have to change is my Y value. So I'm just going to grab it and then scroll it down a little bit. Next, you're going to want to hit these arrows next to position and scale. Then you're going to want to click this position keyframe, grab this little circle here, and then drag it as far down as far left as you can. And then grab this circle over here on the left and do the same thing except to the right. Next, you're going to scroll down, click on the scale keyframe, go ahead and grab this circle. And then this one can move below that line, but try to keep it to where this blue line is lined up with this the white line here on the right. And do the same thing with this left circle. Just try to line up these two circles. Next, what I like to do is go ahead and zoom down a little bit more and then hit this use composition shutter angle and then change this value to 180. And then here you go. Here's that Bezier zoom. Like I said, not too bad to do. Next, we're going to hop into this like zoom flash. It's also not too bad to do. So to do this effect, go ahead and grab another adjustment layer from our project files and cut it down to what we need. Next, go to effects in the top right hand corner and look for brightness and contrast. Go ahead and add that to the adjustment layer and then also look for transform. And then add that to the same adjustment layer. Next, scroll down a bit. And let's say we're going to want our zoom to be happening roughly around here. What you're going to want to do is hit the stopwatch next to brightness and then change this brightness value to 100. Then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move to the left one frame and then hit this reset key to add a zero keyframe. But before we finish brightness, I forgot you have to add a little bit more. You're going to move your playhead forward a bit, roughly around this area, and then change your brightness back to zero. Now we're done with brightness and contrast, so we can minimize that. Then we're going to come down to transform. We're going to be hitting our scale and position again. And this is just going to set default keyframes here. Then we're going to use the arrow key on our keyboard to move to the right one frame. And at this point, you basically zoom in on whatever you want to zoom in on. Now let's assume that we're going to zoom in on our knife again. So what we're going to do is change our scale value to 250, and then grab our Y value, and then just move it down to where we're going to be zooming in on the knife. And then boom, here you go. There's that nice zoom flash effect. Pretty easy to do. Next, we're going to be covering when Valkyrie has a graphic coming on a screen, shaking for a little bit, and then it leaves. Now, in your case, you're going to get whatever graphic you want to have on screen. But in our case, we're going to have Arnold here. 
Next, you're going to go to the effects in the top right and look for transform and then drag transform onto your graphic twice. Next, go to the effects controls in the top left, scroll down a bit. Next, move your playhead to the very beginning of the adjustment layer. Go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to position and rotation. So you're not going to have to change these values a lot, but it's going to be different for each graphic. Now mine has a 200 by 200 ratio here. So what I'm going to do is change this X value to 210 and then change my rotation to 0.5. Then I'm going to move my playhead forward a bit and then I'm going to change my X and then my and then I'm going to change and then I'm going to change my position X value to 190 and then change my rotation to negative 0.5. And then essentially all you have to do is select these two keyframes, hold your alt key, left click, and then drag it over to make copies and just space them roughly about the same and then have this going on as long as you want your effect to go on. That's all you're gonna have to do for this transform. So we can go ahead and minimize that. Then we're gonna move on to this bottom transform, which is basically gonna be your graphic coming on and off of screen. So what we're gonna do is move our playhead to the very beginning of the adjustment layer and then hit the stopwatch next to position. And then you grab your Y value and then just left click and then drag it down to where he's off screen. Move your playhead forward a bit and drag it up to where he's on screen wherever you want it. Move your playhead forward again. Go ahead and hit this add keyframe button to add another keyframe in. Then drag your playhead to the end of your adjustment layer. Hold your alt key, left click on this keyframe and drag it to the very end. Next, you're going to hit this arrow next to position to get this drop down menu. Then you're going to grab this circle on the left here, drag it as far down as far left as you can. Then you're going to grab this circle and drag it down as far left as you can. Then you're going to have to move this keyframe in a bit just to be able to adjust it, but do the same thing. Drag it out to the end. Then here you go, here's that graphic coming in pretty quickly, shaking for a little bit, and then leaving just as quick as it came. All right, and then our next effect is gonna be the slide transition thing. It's not too difficult, but it's probably the most difficult thing in this video so far. All right, so to begin, go ahead and grab another adjustment layer, and you're gonna wanna trim this one down to roughly about this size. You don't have to do an exact measurement, but roughly about this is fine. Then hold your Alt key, left click, and then drag one up to make a duplicate. Then you're gonna come to the effects in the top right here, and then look for an effect called Replicate. You're gonna drag that onto that bottom adjustment layer, and then you're gonna go back to the effects and look for an effect called transform. You're gonna drag that onto that top adjustment layer two times. And then you're also gonna be looking for an effect called directional blur, and then drag that onto that top adjustment layer too. Next, go ahead and select that bottom adjustment layer and then goes to effects controls. And then under the replicate count, go ahead and change it to three. And that's all for that bottom adjustment layer. So now we're gonna go to the top one, up in effects controls again. I like to have my directional blur at the very top, so we're just gonna move it up there. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put your playhead roughly around this area and then click the stopwatch next to blur length. And then you're gonna move your playhead where these two clips meet in the, on the timeline here and go ahead and set a blur length of one. Move roughly about the same distance between these two keyframes to the right and then add another blur length keyframe of zero. And then you're gonna to wanna to change your direction to negative 50. And that's all you have to do for the directional blur. So go ahead and minimize that and then open up one of our transforms. Next, go ahead and move your playhead to the very beginning of the adjustment layer here and hit the stopwatch next to position and rotation. Then you're gonna move your playhead in a little bit, roughly around this area, and then change your position X value to 965, and then also change your rotation to 0.5. Then move your playhead forward once again, and go ahead and change your Y, and then go ahead and change your X, your position, and then go ahead and change your position X value to 955, and then your rotation to negative 0.5. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is select these four keyframes here, hold your Alt key down, and then left click, and then drag them over, and then basically just duplicate them as long as this transition is going on. But then lastly, move your playhead down to the very end, and then go ahead and set the reset key for both of these keyframes. And that's all you have to do for this French form, so go ahead and minimize it, and then go down to the last one. Now first, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change your scale value to 300, then drag your playhead to the very beginning, and hit the stopwatch next to position and then go ahead and change your position y value to 1620 then move your playhead to where these two clips meet on your timeline and change your y position value to negative 540 then use your arrow keys on your keyboard and move to the right one frame hold your alt key and left click this first keyframe and then drag it over on top and it should just auto lock onto there then grab this keyframe on the left here, that negative 540 we made, and drag it to the very end. Next, we're going to hit this arrow next to position to get that drop down menu, and we're going to left click this keyframe. Next, you're going to hit this left middle keyframe here, and you're going to grab this circle, drag it as far right and as far up as you can, and then grab this circle here on the left, and then drag it as far down and as far right as you can. Then you're basically going to do the same thing over here, so grab this circle, move it as far left as you can, and then try to make it roughly even with this circle on the left here. Then grab this last keyframe, we're going to have to move it in a little bit just to edit it. Grab this circle, move it as far down as far left as you can, and then move this keyframe back. All right, now lastly, you're going to scroll down a little bit, hit this box that says Use Composition Shutter Angle, and then change its value to 360. All right, and then here you go. Here's this slide transition effect, which is also the last effect we're going to be covering for this video. So if you found any of these effects helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you want to make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's something else or somebody else you want me to cover in a future video. 
And until next time, peace. And then change this value. And then hit the reset key next. And then hit the sit. And then hit the hit the. And then hit this reset key to add a zero.